So good morning there and welcome back. So uh, hope you are all doing great. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting and very simple uh, topic. Um, but before that I will give you a quaternion example. Uh, in most of the robot you know today they use quaternion okay because the programmer loves it okay for uh, viper orientation or game designing uh, it's very easy that's why i am uh, giving you an example this is uh, actually for baxter robot okay so this is a function for um, conversion from uh, uh, from, uh, from euler to quaternion okay so just say we want to actually move our baxter left hand okay so we are just uh, typical uh, code we are saying we are giving uh, we're selecting rate and then uh, this is a function self target orientation equals to quaternion and these are the quaternion um, uh, x y z parameters x y z and w okay so for getting pose you need position and orientation so position we are getting from camera and orientation from quaternion so let us see the orientation uh, for um, we have injected uh, the gable lock situation okay in uh, in that uh, robot here okay so in this viper we have injected uh, created gimbal lock situation uh, for uh, roll pitch yaw <coughs> movement with 180 degree 0 degree and 45 degree um, rotations and then uh, the Euler angle, uh, Q quaternion from Euler angle, this becomes, uh, this is pi, 3.140 uh, and 0 0.78 uh, in radian actually. Okay. So, <coughs> here is also another uh, site where you can, on the fly, can just uh, convert quaternion to Euler's, Euler's to quaternion, etc, etc. So, we are estimating pose with this uh, position parameters and this uh, quaternion parameters okay the position say this value is x y z and the orientation in oil angle by 0 and 0, uh, 0 0.78 so but here you can see there is no zero okay x y z w all parameters are there corresponding to this uh, gimbal lock situation so it demonstrates very simple example that quaternion, uh, why people love quaternion because they are free from gimbal lock, no zero is here, although in Euler's there will be zero. So I hope that this is a tiny example which shows that in um, orientation description nowadays, uh, roboticists use extensively uh, the quaternion as a tool for, uh, 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 for uh, programming, okay, rather than Euler. But again, um, <coughs> the uh, Euler angle representation uh, is very common in uh, homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix, which we are going to discuss now. So, within the program, it is good to have um, Euler to quaternion uh, conversion the way this program demonstrates. So, now we are going to discuss so the, the orientation. So far, we have uh, quite elaborately uh, discussed okay and uh, where you have seen that say any rigid body okay okay so say this was inertial coordinate frame okay and that it, uh, rigid body when it is rotated uh, okay and uh, by its body coordinate frame this is a body coordinate frame so this is body that means it rotates with respect to body and this is say uh, initial coordinate frame which is not rotating we are assuming that it to be fixed okay so this is your inertial coordinate frame so we normally use this curly uh, bracket um, symbol that is the frame with curly bracket uh, represents the orthogonal coordinate frame okay so we, we know okay so when um, so far 3 by 3 rotation matrix actually was able to capture uh, any arbitrary points position vector okay 
say this was with respect to body coord uh, body coordinate frame and then body uh, the same point is here so what is this um, changed uh, position vector of this point this can be very easily actually by figuring out b with respect to i inertial coordinate frame if you can figure out that okay how it has gone from this position to this position then it is very trivial you can always multiply it by this and you will get the same points position vector with respect to inertial coordinate frame when you are looking from here so this thing time and again we have discussed and that's 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 the reason we are always interested in modern transformation okay not interested in here because this is very trivial okay because our assumption is uh, body is rigid body so the position vector with respect to its own coordinate frame that is body coordinate frame is never going to change okay but it will change with respect to inertial frame and that will be given by this transformation matrix okay that's it now so far so good uh, now instead of say only uh, orientation change okay the rigid body also undergo some position change okay say here is my uh, say inertial coordinate frame i am uh, dem uh, denoting it by a inertial coordinate frame and say this is my body coordinate frame okay because with, with body it has gone here okay so say the body was initially here and initially a and b were together as you have seen now say this is origin of coordinate from a let us denote it by oa and say this is the origin of coordinate from b let us denote as ob okay now in uh, say this is the uh, new position and orientation of of the same body okay. it has done here so this is actually so b so you understand so body was initially like this and it has now not only the frame b has some orientation with respect to a but also the coordinate uh, the co uh, the origin of the coordinate frame b has translated by a distance say and, and say i am looking from here translated by a distance OA, OB, okay, and say this is nothing but in matrix form, Px by Pj, okay, say this is um, X, Y, Z, okay, and this is say U, V, W, you know all these notations, okay. So, say with respect to inertial coordinate frame, this is the uh, uh, position vector of the origin of the body coordinate frame after it has translated. Okay. So, now how to describe position change as well as orientation change? Okay. We want to actually figure out that. Okay. So, how to do that? Um, say we had. Uh, already B with respect to A, I am not putting curly here to avoid uh, uh, some kind of cleanliness or uh, to avoid uh, clumsiness, okay. So this is actually capturing the orientation of B with respect to A which can be given by, you know, many times we have noted R11 r12 r13 r21 r22 r23 r31 r32 r33 okay so this is 3 by 3 rotation matrix okay that i know 
which will describe the orientation of this uh, body with respect to this body, okay, for initial position of this body. And now if I decide, okay, I will create another uh, matrix which I am calling transformation matrix, okay, which will be this rotation matrix which is describing the orientation, okay, plus we okay. cover that. Okay. So, and that I can write just uh, plus means just augmenting that matrix. Okay. I am writing R11, R12, R13, and say Px, R21, R22, R23, say this is Py. 3, 1, uh, 3, 2, uh, 3, 3. That is pretty much. So, I formulated a matrix. Now, let us call it this matrix. Okay. Right. The B with respect to A, what is that orientation plus whatever trans uh, translation uh, the origin has made with respect to this origin. That is it. We have augmented that. Just we can do that because matrix is nothing but representation of um, our desired uh, quantities in structured form and we are using, we have decided that we will use uh, uh, same matrix okay, with some modification where we have augmented. So, this is this will be our uh, describing position and this will be, uh, sorry, this will be our orientation and this will be our position. Okay. Of the coordinate frame or the body here. Okay. <clears throat> so, what is the problem? Problem is here you see now the dimension of the matrix becomes 3 cross 4 and in robotics, in solving inverse kinematics, in trajectory uh, planning, always I need to invert this kind of matrix and I, I need to also evaluate this kind of matrix. But either evaluation of this kind of matrix or the inverting of this kind of matrix is not possible because it is a uh, heterogeneous matrix. Number of row, number of column are different, three rows, four column. So, what we can do, we can just modify a little bit. So, here it is R, uh, B, A and say this is called position vector of B, okay, position vector of B with respect to B, okay. So, if I just write instead of this in a compact form, I am writing B, B and we are putting A row. Okay, so what is that? I am just putting an additional row, putting 0, 0, 0, 1, okay, values, okay. That is actually solving my purpose. So, this is becoming, why I am doing that? Because I need to make my matrix homogeneous on the heterogeneous one, okay. So, what I have done? Nothing. I have just uh, no orientation, orientation uh, 0, 0, 0 and I have in terms of position, I have uh, put one, and incidentally, you have seen this matrix also in graphics, right? So this is called scaling row. Okay, scaling, scaling row. So in graphics, instead of one, normally we uh, put some value m, which uh, scale actually is is called the magnification factor. If it is more than one, that means the image. Is magnified that that many times okay but in robotics always it will be 0, 0, 0, 1. so this is called homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix okay 
or so called HCPM. It's very, very important, very, very um, popular matrix. Okay. So, this matrix now has better expression capability. It is capturing the orientation of a rigid body together with its translation. And isn't it great? So, this is called homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix. Now, as I said, that in robotics, you always need to invert that matrix, uh, the transformation matrix. In rotation also, in Euler angle, you have seen that we are inverting the matrix, we are calling inverse, uh, inverse one, right? If this is given and then in terms of Euler's angle, there are so many transformation and we need to sometimes invert that matrix. But in those cases, the inversion of, um, if rotation matrix of B with respect to A is given, then inverting that was very, very straightforward, right? Inverting that means, now you are looking, uh, sitting at B, okay? Oh. So, this inversion was actually very, very simple. Why? Because the transformation was orthogonal transformation and as you know, the R transpose in orthogonal transformation is equals to R inverse, right? And as you know, matrix inversion is computationally complex, right? It's uh, order of um, n, uh, n cube, okay? Uh, that uh, in machine learning class, uh, I have discussed somewhere and I have shown you how it is. n is the number of elements in the matrix, which is computationally complex, okay? It's not very friendly. But in case of uh, robot orientation, you see, the, since this, the, uh, these matrices are uh, orthogonal transformation matrix, its inverse equal to its transpose. So, its computational complexity is constant. It's nothing, right? So, they just you make the row into column, column into row. That is, you get transpose. If this matrix is given, the inverse of the matrix will be its transpose. Such a beautiful uh, property we had when we were dealing only with orientation. But now, uh, Adding translation to it, we have developed again a compact matrix which we are calling homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix, no doubt about it. But that orthogonality property is gone, okay. That easily I cannot invert this matrix, okay. Homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix cannot be inverted the way we invert the uh, orientation matrix. Okay? So now let us see that how we can actually, I need this space, okay. How I can do that? Very, very simple. Just stay tuned and just uh, watch my deduction and you will know beautifully that how uh, cleverly we will invert the homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix without mathematically inverting it. That means exploiting the structure, inherent structure of the matrix, we will be able to still invert the homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix, okay? So that I am going to show you, okay? So, so what is the problem? Problem is, I have been given uh, this, oh, what is, so I have been, say, B with respect to A equal to given, okay. So that means if I just structurally represent it, so this is given. So what is this? I am looking from here, origin, the, uh, the position vector of the origin. So this is P. PA. What is PA? This is. Okay. I am looking from here. This is PA. This is a vector. Okay. Which is x y, uh, x y, p x, p y, p j. Okay. I, as I told you. So this is given. What I need to do? I need to figure out this. That means I need to calculate B. 
how not by mathematical inversion okay by exploiting the structure which i am going to describe now so this what i can write again in terms of structure b b okay agree now you see the magic okay now i know that uh, this in terms of this can be written because they are orthogonal the orientation sub matrix is orthogonal right so this is actually equal to inverse of this so uh, I, I am not jumping any step equal to equal to its transpose so this matrix is given so its transpose is known just row in the column okay so this is uh, great so this is i am writing here from here i am taking this value okay so in place of this a with respect to b transpose that's major chunk is done okay as it is this i am putting now what is pb so now i am inverting this that means i am here okay i am looking from here origin of this coordinate frame right so now the this is called pb ob oa which is nothing but minus oa ob you all agree because the sense of the vector has changed okay and uh, this is we are calling we are calling uh, we, we are looking from here so this is pb so pb is actually we are looking from here this is the um, now how can i write pb i know pa right so pb is nothing but Fine, you know. So the orientation of A with respect to B times P A will be the um, P B new description of P B. I am looking from here. Now again, so this is known. You see, this is known. So this is known. So this is again known. Now in terms of this, so uh, what I can write, I can write. This is again. transpose p a and since the sense of the vector has changed so now it is minus so i can write down p b will be minus r b a transpose yeah very simple so that's the you see i have given i have been given this and i have inverted this matrix without mathematical inversion just uh, playing the trick of the structure okay so i will just read this matrix so when i will do the program i will just read the element of the matrix which is very simple 4 by 4 and then i will select this 3 by 3 sub matrix and i will just uh, make it transpose okay that will be what is this and for this i will have to make minus again i will use a transpose and this is again known i will put it here so this is known now this is known now in terms of known parameter and i have got so this is exploiting the structure i can call it exploiting the structure of the matrix i am inverting the homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix and please remember in robotics right so this each element of this matrix 3 by 3 transpose matrix okay a function of time in fact each element here is a function of time when the robot is moving right so this is a function of time so 
once you need to and tons of such matrices you need to invert and you can argue that all, it's only four by four matrix how much savings is there huge saving is there because tons of such matrices always need to be updated inverted right and inverting in this fashion without actually calculating the um, uh, determinant and adjoint etc etc right and without mathematical inversion saves a lot of time believe me okay so that's why in robotics we use this methodology for um, uh, making inversion of a matrix okay and one more thing so this is special to robotics right no not given all four by four matrix you cannot invert like this so when you uh, so i am i am giving you a small assignment write a program simple okay uh, which will read a given matrix and first check whether it is a homogeneous coordinate assumption matrix or not how to check again you will have to just uh, check with the orthogonality criteria okay so you will have to again select judiciously which of the criteria you should check that in the in the um, rotation matrix okay the magnitude of each row and each column is equals to one you can uh, verify that one then r r transpose will be unitary matrix you can verify this one and again you can come up that uh, in which process of verification one will less time less computation and you apply that uh, and first verify that whether a given input matrix for which i have asked you to find an inversion whether it is at all a homogeneous coordinate assumption matrix or not by exploiting the uh, orthogonal transformation uh, property and once it passes the test that means it is a homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix and then you invert following this so that's your assignment please do and so okay so in robotics this is very very important to know that this is the way we do the uh, in a special transformation we first describe special transformation with the help of 4 by 4 homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix and we have uh, devised a methodology for um, inverting that homogeneous coordinate transformation matrix. Now we will do some uh, arithmetic that is transformation, uh, homogeneous coordinate transformation uh, operations as an operator. Okay. Say uh, here you see this is my coordinate frame A, this is my coordinate frame B, this is my coordinate frame C, this is my coordinate frame D, so on and so forth. So all these coordinate frames are actually uh, describing the rigid body, they are attached with a rigid body, okay. Say just a rough sketch I am drawing, okay. So this frame is attached with this body and say on the ground also it's not moving okay and this is a position vector so this position vector with respect to this always will remain same okay because they are rigid body okay say this is my another okay. it could be okay another uh, So, in this way, you see, I am now uh, building a robot, huh? and the beautiful transformation matrix can actually capture robot uh, position and orientation. Okay. okay, so so this becomes a robot now, huh? and you see. And treating the homogeneous coordinate transformation uh, matrix as an operator, you can describe any uh, any points on anywhere on the uh, robot. It's a serial kinematic chain now, okay, uh, with respect to any of the coordinate frame. Say this is uh, A, this is B, right? So this is PB. So 
if this is PB, then what is PA? Means when I am looking from here, looking from here, same, same point. Okay, I need to figure out that. So what, what, how you will do that? So now you will be having P with respect to A. You need to calculate this and then multiply it by PB. That will be your PA. Okay, that means this points description with respect to inertial coordinate. And say there is some point here, PD. Okay, um, say PD. And say this is the position. Okay, PD. And say I want um, to describe that with respect to my this coordinate frame. That is, I am looking from here. So the point I am looking from here. And I need to figure out that uh, what will be PA, okay, when it is described, PD is described by uh, about his own coordinate frame D, right? So, what to do? I'm PD as seen from here, okay. So, I need to figure out, um, I need to figure out this transformation matrix um, D with respect to A. So, whatever with respect to, we put it here as a convention, okay. Top left, bottom right, this is D, with respect to what is put here, top uh, right, okay. That will be equals to, huh? equals to the solution matrix of B with respect to A, then C with respect to B, and then D with respect to C, so on and so forth. So as many uh, links are there, if I figure out this matrices, and now here you see, um, with respect to D, I know this is PB, right? So what will be my PA? PA will be this. Uh, PA will be actually, So, whatever this is, this matrix is becoming, um, so D with respect to, you are getting D with respect to A, right? And multiply it by uh, PD, okay? So, this multiplied by uh, PD will give you PA. That's it. Very simple, right? Uh, do not make any mistake. Never ever, right? So in uh, general, uh, it is written like this. Okay. I coordinate frame. I equals to 1, 2, 3, up to n. And uh, normally the first coordinate frame A is uh, denoted as zeroth coordinate frame or home coordinate frame. Okay, this is a name, right? So that is that is uh, x zero, y zero, z zero kind of thing. Okay. So with uh, this, you can I can write uh, in, this is in general form when n equals to n, uh, starting from one. So I can figure out, I put 1, n equal to, uh, uh, i equals to 1, this will be 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, you see the rhythm, p, n minus 1 up to n. So, this will be equal to your, such a powerful um, you see, operation. This is the multiplication, matrix multiplication only in order you are doing to get this. Once you get this, that means in positions, position and orientation with respect to home position or zero position, then anywhere, whatever point is there, anywhere, you will have to just select that matrix and multiply with respect to what the description is there and I will be able to get the description with respect to this coordinate. So we'll discuss more on this. So this is very very simple, uh, but 
only tricky uh, thing was how to invert, which we have discussed in my uh, earlier. Um, just now we have discussed. Okay. So we'll start from here, and we'll see that uh, we'll take up some um, problem uh, to tell you how to compute a manipulator. Um, equation for example okay uh, solving a manipulator okay so this is say a robot uh, which has a tool and there is a table so this is called work shell right so there is a table there is a um, object okay this is the goals for example this tool or nail has to be inserted to be whole right so robot is holding it robot gripper is holding it okay so this is tool is denoted as tool coordinate frame. Okay. This is the wrist. Wrist. Uh, this coordinate frame is actually capturing the motion of the wrist. This is a base coordinate frame. Okay. And say this is table, and I know the uh, start. The, that means the description of the um, cube with respect to the table. Okay. So that I can. I have a measurement instrument scale or something like that, I can calculate the position uh, about x, about y, about z, and I can know that. Okay, so this is very easy to know. This is a goal given to you, and this is my robot which is trying to insert this tool here. That means it is wanting to put t with respect to g. T with g. Okay, so how to solve this? You see, now you see, this is very simple. Oh. Suppose A and B, right? Now, OA, I am uh, that is vector, uh, polygon vector, right? So, is a resultant of this and this. Now, what is this? Say, oh, this is OB. Okay. So, what is OB? Huh? Tell me. Uh, this is transformation matrix of B with respect to this okay oh sorry with respect to this so transformation matrix of uh, s with respect to this i am looking from here okay i am looking from here i am looking from here i am looking from here <laughs> so i want to draw a i okay i am looking here Sitting on this base coordinate frame, I am looking first here. Okay, that is OB. Okay. So that is given by transformation matrix of A with respect to B. Now, BA, what is it? It is a transformation matrix of G with respect to S. Okay, that is your OA. So OA from traveling from this direction, I receive like this. That can be equal to that is called manipulator equation. Very very important concept. So that can be equal to. This is also the uh, resultant vector of this polygon. This, this, and this. Got my point? Huh? So this is equals to transformation x of w with respect to s times this one. T with respect to W times G with respect to B. So, so this is called manipulator equation. The, how I got this equation? So this is common, okay, resultant. I am traveling from this direction and figuring out way, traveling from this direction and figuring out way and equating them is giving me the e equation. Now Further simplification can be done. This has to be inserted here, right? So when it is insert, inserted, then this will be T and G will be same. That is, this matrix will be unitary matrix. I am telling it again. My task is to say from this equation. Okay. And I am writing this as unitary matrix because my goal is what? What is the problem? Problem is 
this tool has to be inserted at G and in that condition, what will be my um, W with respect to P? That means for which I need to figure out the uh, robot's joint angle, right? So, so this is my simplified equation. Say, what are the things given? G with respect to S. This is my known. So, this is known. How it is known? Because it is a, on a table, known dimension table, known dimension Q is sitting over here. Now, since table is not moving, robot base is not moving, this is also known to me. Right? And I need to, this is unknown. This is unknown. And um, T, the moment tool tool is of fixed uh, position and orientation. Okay, so the moment tool is uh, grasped by the robot, this is also known with respect to wrist. So this is known. And this you can figure out. So when this is known, this is known, this is known, you can figure out this. Now suppose somebody has given you in a teach pendant mode, uh, somebody is giving you this and this is unknown. You need to figure out this. So all three are known and this will be, um, that's, this you can figure out. So once the equation is formulated perfectly, you can solve many problem which you require. Okay. And in the process only what you have to do, say how to calculate this. E w with respect to b you have to just invert p g s okay and this mathematical inversion remember 4 by 4 transformation matrix i will not mathematically invert it's very simple so you get this and that is the rest with respect to base so, so if this is known in terms of this, then you know the how the robot joint has to move, and robot, you can control that. Once you know the robot joint, how how many joints have to be moved, you can calculate. We will discuss uh, that control aspect later on. But this is very very simple, very very elegant, right? Solving a manipulator equation. Okay, and many such problem can be solved using this transformation only. Say. Here is a camera. Camera can, and this is a box station, right? Camera can see the object. Also, say camera can also see the base. So, this is known. The uh, base as seen by the camera, even. Okay. Then, object as seen by the camera is given. So it will be a good task for you if I ask you to calculate um, then object with respect to base. You calculate. This, these are given. It's very simple, right? Uh, matrix inversion, multiplication. That's it. Okay. And using this simple concept, many things. Camera can see also the tool when these are known. Okay. So with respect to camera. Ultimate goal is what? That I need to make the tool doing some job here. So camera will actually uh, know some of the um, matrices and then based on known uh, matrices, we will try to figure out what is required. So lots of such uh, simple but tricky problem can be, uh, can be given and you can solve them just knowing the basics are fundamental of the uh, manipulator equation and knowing the spatial transformation, um, how to use spatial transformation as an operator. So that's great and now in next we will try uh, to more formally figure out the mathematical model of a manipulating type of robot where this is fixed on the ground okay on the ground it is fixed on the ground okay it's a serial kinematic chain 
because this only representation by 4 by 4 matrix is uh, not enough. Why not enough? Because this individual link may have some geometrical uh, property. They are twisted or they are bent or with respect to each other. So if all the complexities are there uh, and with those complex links, robot is being designed and built, then how to make a mathematical model that we are going to study using um, the very well-known Dinovate Hartenberg principle. Uh, we'll try to develop the mathematical model because once the mathematical model is known, then you can program it. Okay, that will be in my next lecture. Till then, um, stay safe and don't forget to wear mask. Okay, and have a nice day.